We're here today at Jacob's Pillow, and I'm with Norton Owen, the archivist at, at Jacob's Pillow, who's created this amazing, amazing uh, compilation of material about dance and about Joe Pilates, because of he was course. here, um, and Sean Gallagher, and we have Kathy Strack and Elaine Ewing. Um, and we are just here because we want to learn more, and it's fun. Um, but these guys are going to tell us all about the history of Joe Pilates at Jacob's Pillow and in this area. So, well, great. Show us your stuff. Well, um, I have some illustrations to show as well. Nineteen, where the the main period that we're talking about in terms of his pillow activity was forty one uh, through the mid fifties, mm -hmm. and. Um, he did not teach every one of those years, uh, but he did teach from time to time. And there were there were periods of time when he and Ted Chuan, our founder director, would have a falling out, and uh, w when he wouldn't be here for a year or two. So Ruth St. Dennis and Ted Chuan uh, were a couple f um, from the from 1914 when they married um, until 1930. They separated. But they remained very close, and it was during the 1930s when uh, Ruth St. Dennis was the one who first discovered discovered uh, Pilates, and that it was very helpful for her for her body and something that that uh, worked well for her. So she's the one who let Sean know about Pilates and recommended him, yeah. and so Sean started going to him, and I do not know the exact sequence of events of, of how it all, you know, what came next, but through that association, through um, Sean and Pilates getting to know each other and developing a uh, professional relationship, Pilates eventually bought property, uh, Real, truly right around the corner from Jacob's Pillow. Which Sean um, now owns. Which Sean now owns. Because of Norton. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, right yeah, so that, that's the story because I came up with some archival stuff on, you know, to show Norton what I had and I want to see what he had. And when I was here, he says, well, you know, his property's for sale and I think it has the equipment in it. So he hooked me up with the realtor and then I went to the realtor and he showed me the property and I told the realtor, I said, I, I don't want the property, but I'll buy the equipment. And then the owner said, "Well, if you want the equipment, you got to buy the property." <laughs> so here we are, you know, almost 20, 20 years later with the property, which is great because now we have the studio and we have everything. So you know, and it's like we did today. We're slowly going to rebuild it, so it's good. Yeah. Well, it takes it takes a village. Yes, let's it just does. Say. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it, it's clear that Jacob's Pillow was a fulcrum, in a way, for, for this activity because the fact that Pilates was um, uh, having a professional relationship with the dancers who were coming here to the Pillow was, of course, the reason that he wanted to have a cottage uh, nearby. Uh, so, and then, of course, once he does have a cottage, then that becomes another center of activity. Um, and certainly the, the people of that period, I'm sure as you have spoken to Anne Hutchinson, that she would say, uh, because you know, what I hear is that there, was, there were people coming to his studio also, as well as him coming to teach mat classes at the pillow, then he would, if he was wanting to work in particular uh, with, you know, one-on-one -on -one or uh, with a small group, those people would go back with him to his studio as well. So there was a very fluid, um, and at that time also, you know, let's remember that Jacob's Pillow was um, a little more divided, let's say, in terms of property. It wasn't just the center that we know right now, because at that time, they owned a, um, a, prop a piece of property further up George Carter Road, which they called the Hill Studio. So in a way, there would have been these sort of three different properties that were uh, a kind of hub of activity, uh, but that some things would be happening at the Hill Studio, some things would be happening on the main pillow ground, some things might be happening at Joe's studio. Mm -hmm. And um, and then this this continued, uh, of course, and uh, until until the fifties, 
uh, we hosted several years ago as many of the people who had studied with Pilates here as we could find. Um, and Anne Hutchinson is one of them. Anne Hutchinson was one who, came, who fortunately was able to be here. Um, another, and this was sort of happenstance, uh, but we grabbed onto it, that um, Jenny, um, um, Jenny Weber, mm -hmm. was, um, had, who had been a student here, and she participated in that pillow talk also. Um, she was the one who who uh, quite engagingly talked about how Pilates was quite attracted to the the um, am <laughs> specific anatomy of the of a female body. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> yes, um, uh, and uh, and as she was telling her story, and we were showing one of the films, um, Mr. Pilates had the good sense to actually demonstrate for us <laughs> by making film. a beeline over to Jenny. In, in the film so that what she was talking about was actually seen by the whole audience. <laughs> For anybody that. watching at home, there's going to be a link in the, in the class description yeah. to this talk um, that is available online and you can all watch yeah. Ginny tell about her own experience here. It's pretty marvelous. One of the people that, who we had reached out to um, for that pillow talk was uh, well, she was at the time known as Shirley Traver. She's now Sherry Traver Underwood. And um, she made notes in 1942. And I don't know if you can get this on camera, but, um, but at the top it says Joe Pilates. Um, she draws some little stick figures and she describes uh, exercises here. And uh, these are notes that I knew existed. Um, she's been talking about them. They're pretty extensive. Um, I have not analyzed them yet, but um, yeah, Jack knife. The, Jack there's knife, yeah. jackknife, spine twist, twist, shoulder bridge, um, various other things, uh, hip twist. So, um, and she signs them uh, 1942. Um, says that she sent them to me, June, January, June, 17th. June 17th, 2015. So these are um, newly acquired treasures by, you know, creating a center where people can come to look at materials uh, is that we want to have these things available for people to learn from, as well as, you know, it's one of the few places certainly that is available to the public where um, where Pilates had a presence. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, um, you know, in the very places where, if we can get a uh, photo, you know, in, in, the, in the very places like in the tea garden where he was giving a mat class in the 1940s, um, you can walk there, you know, you can, you can walk around the, that spot and see exactly where this took place. And of course there are films that were taken place, that, that took place at the same time. So mm -hmm. that these, um, these places can be experienced. Um, here's another one. Um, this was a, this uh, obviously a, not as fine a photograph. The f previous one I showed was, was a, um, a professional photo, uh, photographer, but this one was a snapshot made by a student. Oh, so um, this was blown so, up. So, yes, so this was blown up when we did a Pilates at the Pillow uh, exhibit several years ago, and we, you know, used resources wherever we could, um, and Sean was good enough to loan us some things for that exhibit as well, but then also any kinds of things like this, snapshots, and and we have a lot of those sorts of things that um, have have come around. Uh, this is now this is probably the earliest photo that we have, um, and showing um, Pilates looking rather resplendent in his white t-shirt or white mm -hmm. um, uh, white top and dark trousers. White shoes. But white shoes. Yes, mm -hmm. he he was spiffy. He was dapper. Um, and this is also in the tea garden. But this was taken from a color slide. This photograph was made by John Lindquist, um, and 
I, I believe, I, although it's not dated, I believe this would have been one of his first visits. You can also tell because he looks a little younger in this photograph. Doesn't have the um, great, really gray hair yet. So yeah, he's... yeah. Then I wanted to also show a, another one taken by John Lindquist, but in a much more, um, and I mean, this one, of course, is a much more posed photograph um, and is so sharp that you can actually make out the tattoos on his arms. Um, and the different pieces of equipment. Down yes. There. Well, it's, this is interesting because you can see he has the magic circle. He has the, the, the neck exerciser, but people, this is the magic square. And, and people have talked about it, but it's not seen too often. You can really see this is because it's a square shape. It has the spring in the middle, and it's very much like this, where when you close it, it stretches the spring. Instead of when this one, when you open it, it stretches mm -hmm. the spring. So it's the opposite version. So it's very similar in action to the magic circle. Right. But except for it's a it's a spring instead of a, a band, so it's you know it's an interesting. So the magic square did exist. Yes, it did. Mm. And the interesting thing about this photograph uh, from 1943 is, um, I believe it was taken in conjunction. It, it makes sense that it would have been taken at the same time when um, he actually. We'll see if we can hold this here when he um, did a presentation and. Uh, I'm looking to see which one. Sorry, it's on this side here. Uh, so this is August 14th, 1943, and um, one item, the next to last item on the program says, demonstration of the contrology system of physical fitness conducted by the originator, Joseph H. Pilates, of the Jacobs Pillow faculty. Um, and what one interesting thing I just noticed about this today was that that actually tells me it may have been a sort of impromptu presentation um, was that the, in the week before, oftentimes these programs give a little preview of what's coming, and and in the week before it says next week Natalie Krasovska, Grant Muradoff, Ted Sean, Gertrude and Oscar Hallenbeck. Jacob's Pillow Dancers, it doesn't say anything about Pilates. So it may have been a very last minute, like, oh, oh could you fill in on this program? Or why don't you show something that, you, that you're doing? Also, the, the thing to remember about this, 1943, what's going on, World War II, uh, it was very difficult at that point to get artists to come. Um, oftentimes, all they were being paid was their travel expenses to come up and do a performance. Right. And gas was rationed. It was very difficult for audiences to get here. So things were really, the presentations were on a shoestring. Right. And, and oftentimes, it was the faculty members who were... Recruited doing, to you, and we're doing things, you know, doing the presentation. So that's probably how it came about. Um, it's kind of, you know, the details of it are lost to time, yeah, but uh, but we can piece together that from what we know about it. Yeah. So Ted Sean did write an autobiography called A Thousand and One Night Stands, uh, which was published in 1960. Um, but a few years ago, I found uh, at the New York Public Library that there was something that had been labeled a manuscript and sort of believed that it was just the, a typescript of what ended up in print. But as I looked at it more carefully and, and compared it with what came out in print, I realized that it was actually his first draft and that he worked with a, um, a, another writer to edit uh, everything. Mm -hmm. So what ended up in print was far less uh, detailed mm -hmm. at, than mm -hmm. what he had originally written. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, it was also mm, cleaned up, let's say. Not as juicy. So, yeah, not as juicy. <laughs> so, so this is um, an excerpt, and he was writing this, he would have been writing this in the uh, early 40s, so, or, or I should say early to mid 40s. So he um, he actually talks about, um, uh, you know, ending his connection with Pilates, which I have no doubt that he did at this point, but they rekindled it after this. So this shouldn't be taken as the last word. And also to be know that, that at the time that he's writing this, he's on the outs. Um, so maybe that also accounts for uh, the characterization. 
So he says, facing a winter of physical inactivity, I decided I would look up and try out a course of exercises at the studio of Joseph Pilates. Ruth had discovered this man and raved about him, and I could see with my own eyes how he had healed her. He, she had suffered for years with bad knees, the bete noire of all dancers, and could not kneel or get up without excruciating pain. The result of this and a general discouragement had kept her from practicing as she should, and she had added weight all over, and her ankles had gotten big. Then a year or two later, after working faithfully for many months with Pilates, she was slim as in the years when I first knew her, her ankles like a young girl's, and she had no more pain or trouble with her knees. I feel like I'm doing an infomercial. <laughs> uh, she called him a sculptor of the body and said he was no ordinary gymnastic instructor, but an inspired genius. And so I found him. I dimly recognized the old Van Dyke studio building when I first went to him, but only after many days did it dawn on me that it was in this building I had taught my first lessons in New York, spring of 1914. Joe and his partner Clara, intensely German in manner and dialect, were martinets, but he was truly a genius, and his system of exercises was all that Ruth had described. I went daily all that winter and following year when I, whenever I was in New York and lost weight, trimmed down waistline, got suppleness throughout my torso that had begun to get immobile of late years and was altogether made over. As I came home raving about the work each day, after a few weeks, Barton decided to join me, and so he went with me each day, as well as taking his ballet classes with Dolan. The following summer, he came up to Jacob's Pillow. I had tried to sell him to Dolan, and Joe did conduct a few classes. This would have been 1941 that he's talking about now, here. Who was Dolan? Dolan, Anton Dolan ran, was a big ballet star. Uh, he was the partner of Alicia Markova, and he and Markova, Dolan and Markova, rented Jacob's Pillow from Sean in 1941. So um, that would have been actually the first year that Ann Hutchinson, because she was a student that year, mm -hmm. that she would have had um, contact with him. So then he says the following summer he came up to Jacob's Pillow and then this would have been 42. I had tried to sell him to Dolan and Joe did conduct a few classes, 41, but Dolan was not really interested in his work and they did not get along well. <laughs> the summer of the first big festival after the theater was built, 1942, and the summer after that, 43, I had Joseph Pilates on my regular faculty and he did the stretching and limbering class each morning and everyone liked his work. Also, he gave private lessons and corrective treatments. But the German in him and his age, 63, his last summer at Jacob's Pillow, were too much for me. He wanted to run everything. He maintained that all this dance business was nonsense, and the whole of Jacob's Pillow should be turned over to him to run his health farm. <laughs> health was really important. Art was only trivial and unessential. He drank a lot, he philandered with the girl students, and he took no orders and abided by no rules or schedules of the place. He did what he wanted to do, when and how he wanted to do it. His work was so excellent that I put up with this for two summers. But at the end of the 1943 summer, he got so ugly in manner and so peremptory in his advice as to how I should run all of my business that when he left the place hardly speaking to me because I had not followed his advice in regard to a psychopathic girl student, I felt he had lived out his usefulness and never invited him back again, although I continued to recommend people to go to him when I, whom I felt would be benefited by his work. And while I did not go back again myself, because from that time on my visits to New York were brief and crowded, and because I honestly felt I would not be welcome, I continue to use his exercises with profit, even yet. Wow. So and, and they that, did rekindle after that. And yes. Then, yes. then, yes, so that was, you know, probably written 40, 1945, somewhere in there, 45, 46. Um, but then he, they did make amends and he did come back to Jacob's Pillow and I'm glad, uh, for many reasons, um, not the least of which was that many of the people then who we do have contact with now, like Jenny Weber, people who 
you know, their contact with him would have been in the early 50s right. um, when they were studying with him. Thank well, you for that. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, and wonderful. we know that he, Joe bought the land in 48. Okay, so he, that's a, this is good. This, yeah, yeah, so that puts it into context. Yeah, yeah, he came back yeah, and absolutely. said, all right, I'll have my own land. Right, and that might have been some reason for, uh, you know, who knows, because I, I don't know where he would have been. We do have some housing charts that I could, could consult and see whether in that 42, 43 summer, was he living on the play, on the property, right. for instance, um, or what? Because as you found that he didn't yet own his cottage until yeah. a little bit later. But it makes sense that he, that they would have, if they, you know, whether they mended the relationship first and then mm -hmm. he bought the house or he bought the house and because of that figured out a way that they could work together. And I know that they repaired the relationship to the point that Ted Sean spoke publicly on at least two occasions mm. um, that I think a birthday party for yes. Joe Pilates and um, an anniversary party. Mm -hmm. He's on the program and is like one of the first speakers. Right. And that would have been years later. Uh, yes. Like when he was 80, I think. Yeah. Right? One of them was when he was His 80th, 80th birthday. birthday. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us just say that both of them were very strong individuals. <laughs> just an observation about, you know, everybody focuses on Joe teaching the students, but mm. I know that in at least one of the programs there's a picture where Joe taught some of the teachers. Oh, sure. I would well. imagine. It wasn't just the dance students that mm -hmm. came up here. Mm -hmm. he, well, the thing to realize, too, also that at the time, um, a big part of the, the school, um, I mean, it was called the, the, the sort of alternative name for the school was the University of the Dance. Mm -hmm. Ted Sean really believed in, um, I mean, yes, he was educating dancers, but he was also educating people who, he was educating educators, you know. So yes. many of the people who were enrolled as students were themselves teachers, mm -hmm. and this was what they were doing for their professional development, was mm -hmm. coming here learning these things and then being able to take that back to their mm -hmm. students. So there was um, um, you know, a, a, a real network going on. Mm -hmm. well, and also the letter, he says, mm -hmm. he, you know, he gave them corrective sessions. So yes. he did exercise, but he also worked on them. Right. Because, yes. you know, dancers still had the same issues they had today, but they didn't really have physical therapy like they do today. Right. So they would come and he would exercise them. They had problems, he would work on them as well. So yeah. he would do corrective sessions with mm -hmm. them. Well, Norton, thank great. you so much for sharing this with us. Sure. Everyone. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, great. Sean, sure. as well, for Thanks. coming. <laughs>